Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm really happy that you were able to find the correct route through the dungeon and reach the final room with the final boss. So welcome. Uh, so I had a crazy idea a few months ago for a session. So here we are. And my idea was that DevConf is amazing that we have these very in-depth, thorough technical sessions. But Sunday after party, especially in the morning, I think we should use something more chill and relaxing, right? So that's what we are going to do today. And aside from not the typical talk that the presenter prepares slides and everything up front and delivers it and nice, but today we are going to do it exact opposite. Actually, this is my only slide. Actually, yeah, that, there is another one, but uh, it's, it's for me mostly. There is only one slide and we are going to create content today. And then after the presentation, we'll share it. And so hopefully we'll create something amazing today. And my idea for this session was that I always love these discussions with uh, people who are working in the field, like what tools they are using on, or maybe some new fascinating command in Git that you discovered and saves you a lot of time. And yeah, we can read all about this in blog posts online or videos. But would, since we are here at the conference, maybe it would be nice to do it in person, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe here as a group. So this is going to be interactive. Uh, oh yeah, and I should mention we are going to use an online tool for that. So please fire up your phones, uh, laptops, smartwatches, smart whatever you want. Uh, and we are going to do it on the, uh, on the tool called menti.com. Uh, I tried to use Slido, but it was too expensive, so menti.com was free. And we are going to do word clouds or, or like this, uh, like a variable input. And uh, it will be here. And, and then we can discuss every slide, like w what, what you are using and, and what real do you like. So you can participate and speak, or you uh, don't need to speak. But I would really appreciate if you uh, like filled in the questions. So let me transfer to the other tab. Oh yeah, it's open right away. So please go to menti.com and type that uh, 3675 uh, Hope you can see it in the back. Maybe I try to zoom it if it works. Okay, it doesn't do any, okay. Uh, yeah, so if you can't see, I can maybe write it down, but it looks like that you can see. So yeah, first question, what language you are uh, enjoying right now? Like a starter. Okay, uh, thank you. So we have lots of Python lovers here. Okay, amazing. And also, yeah, we're actually very diverse audience. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can really learn from each other. So any particular feature you like about uh, language of your choice? Okay, uh, so you just love them. Okay, I get it. <laughs> but for example, in our team, we are using Python as well, and we started using the Walrus operator. That was that was quite quite uh, amazing that someone introduced it, and we all had to learn what it actually does. <laughs> okay, uh, so that was the starter, and I I will try to control it from my phone because that's what they said is the easiest. So let's start with something more challenging and okay come on okay it doesn't work <laughs> oh maybe ah perfect yeah so i had to also click it second time so i'm actually teaching git at university so git is my most favorite tool so i had to do the uh Second question about Git. So what's your favorite Git command or Git option? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> okay. Okay, so are you doing Git push force on the upstream main branch? Who does it? Ah, uh, get out! <laughs> oh, lovely, so many. Oh, I can see rebase, cherry pick. Yeah, very nice. Oh, someone using work tree. So how are you using work tree? I, I never found a use case for that, to be honest. So, yeah, please. Uh, I, work, I work with Kernel and mm. I have uh, multiple branches uh, mm. in multiple directories of, the main, uh, mm -hmm. of my main working 
trajectory, mm -hmm. so I can work on uh, with multiple, so say, uh, like like source files, as, uh, mm -hmm. and branches, and uh, also with multiple repositories because mm -hmm. in kernel we have uh, repositories mm -hmm. of files where mm -hmm. the main uh, working kernel is, and also some subsystems. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Okay, so it seems like the fork tree was designed for kernel. Thank you. So, so just for the recording, uh, the answer was that uh, the developer is using work tree in kernel to work on multiple branches in parallel and also on multiple repositories for kernel. Uh, and for everyone else who doesn't know work tree, so work tree actually allows you to check out a git branch in, in a new uh, like directory, uh, like like tree structure, so that you can literally see two files from two branches at the same time. So uh, yeah, it, it's neat, but uh, as I said, like I, I can usually just like switch branch, right? But but if you need multi like to see the file from multiple branches at the same time, it can be useful. Okay, so what else we have uh, here? You can see bisect, rebase. Rebase, uh, the, uh, I is, is the biggest one, so thank you. Yeah, that's also my most favorite command from Git. So anything that stand out for anyone? In Git. It's very close to one, but it's not there. It's not exactly Git. But I don't know if any of you know the part. <laughs> it's like uh, I read that if you make a mistake, a typo on the mm -hmm. command, you always get that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you meant this. So mm -hmm. you can just type part on the command line, and it will just mm -hmm. revert uh, and use the recommendation instead. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes web saving because you have this long command, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh no, I need to copy it again. <laughs> yeah. so Then you have to, to, to add these mm. parameters yeah. uh, upstream origin. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if, if I have this, this tool, I, I mm. think we just give back, push, mm -hmm. it spells with an error, and I type F, and mm. it recommends uh, mm -hmm. all the parameters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, sorry, Martin, ju just for the recording, uh, real quick. So the comment from the audience was a tool called dafak or something like that, and you use the F word <laughs> to correct the previous command. So if Git output something very wrong, you just run one command and usually guesses correctly what you want to do. Uh, Martin? Yeah, I don't see that, and I know that many people don't know that there is Git uh, red fork, mm -hmm. uh, So, just want to mention it. Okay, thank you, Martin. Yeah, that's a very good point, and it's true, it's not there. So, Git has a ref log uh, that's like a log of what you are doing with your Git repo. So, it tracks all the references, everything. So, if you screw something up, you can always look it up there. Like, like the output is a little bit complicated, so maybe use ChatGPT to explain it to you, but you can actually really find your commits that were lost or something and check them out and, and work out. Thank you, Martin, that's a very good point. Okay, so uh, lots of people loving it, perfect. Uh, so let's go for next one. Okay, I'll probably use this because the phone isn't really reliable. So next slide. So the next one is, uh, so we touched Git, so let's do, uh, let's do shell aliases or even shell functions, but I don't think they would fit on the slide. So do you have some favorite shell aliases that you are using? Uh, okay, I can see LL, so that, that's even the standard one that should be in bash by default. So, but uh, like here, maybe also explain what the alias does, <laughs> because it's just like one or two letters, it would be hard to guess. <laughs> So anyone using anything fancy? Okay, LS, LA. So for example, I'm trying to use uh, a lot of like, instead of writing Git, I write just G, instead of writing of like OC, I just write O, and like I like all these that are used daily, I just shorten them to one letter, that's, that's very useful for me. Okay, I'll, I'll try to hide that interface thing. Okay, so yeah, that, that long alias looks like related to Java. Oh, pip and shelf, yeah, that's very nice. So what does Git uh, work in progress does? Uh, it uh, filters uh, the branches uh, by the time you ask for it to the branches. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. So it shows you the names of the oh, nice. last work done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It uh, uses uh, for each rep, mm -hmm. sort, and mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the, wow, that's brilliant, thank you. So the Git v, uh, working progress uh, does that, it, it prints out branches uh, and sorted by uh, the, the ones that you worked on most recently. So, which I agree that that's a big problem because if we have hundreds of branches and they are sorted alphabetically, that's not very useful. We usually work on them once and then forget them and forget them clean it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, what else? Oh, V equals Vim, nice. <laughs> and Vim equals NVim, so is it, is it transitive? <laughs> okay, auto VPN, so uh, probably automatically connecting to VPN, even filling the credentials. Okay, no one wants to confess to that one. <laughs> okay, so can we scroll this? Oh yeah, we can. Ah, okay, yeah, th th that's the, yeah, oh, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, any more interesting shell aliases, all functions? Okay, then maybe we can go to the next one. So what else? Okay, and how about tools? Just any command line tools, graphical tools, services, like whatever you are using that makes your life easier and maybe other people should know about it. Ah, Grafana, nice. Okay, I don't know many of these. So Git GUI, is it some kind of new interface for Git? It's an old uh, TK-based mm -hmm. interface. Okay. Just you can commit uh, and push uh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Just if you want to commit, uh, mm -hmm. I find it easier to do mm -hmm. it graphical and the rest I do it online. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So just for recording, uh, it's a... Uh, it's TK-based interface, graphical for Git. But I also saw TIG in the list. That's actually the Git interface I'm using. It's command line based. It's, it's very efficient, lots of shortcuts, and, and it's really perfect. OK, I can see Tmax. Oh, K9S. What's K9S? <laughs> Oh, wow. So finally someone did that. Okay, thank you. So just for recording, it, it's a terminal user interface for Kubernetes. Okay, thank you for sharing. Uh, okay, what else we have here? Uh, so anyone wanna share about the tool of your choice that you put here? So, sorry, what was the name of the tool? Directors. Uh, so is it in the list? It should be. It's all in purple. Yeah. Okay. Top top. Right, top right. Oh, oh this one? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. So uh, just for recording, the tool is this one. It's Directus. And it's a graphical user interface for databases, which allows you to do really fascinating things like, so, and is it also for relational? Yes. It okay. It allows you to select any table, any relations, select what you want people to see on the um, interface, uh, mm -hmm. the relation, mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's a really good tool. Wow, fascinating. So maybe we should try that in our project because we are struggling with database recently, <laughs> like quite a bit. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and Python wins it again, so PyCharm is biggest. 
Okay, any more tools to share? Anyone? Oh. Yeah, maybe about well, this mm -hmm. uh, as a render that helps you to find things faster mm -hmm. to be integrated in, uh, everywhere, like mm -hmm. history or autocomplete, so you don't have to mm -hmm. spell out everything. You can make mistakes or like mm -hmm. just like the first characters of your directory mm -hmm. and then you'll find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the tool was FZF, and it's a fuzzy finder that finds, uh, like you can make mistakes, and it will uh, find the directories files efficiently. And does it on only work for uh, files and directories, or like an anything? Oh, Basically, for anything. You can everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Control R, mm -hmm. Control R, and uh, it searches in history. Wow, amazing. So also does, like, like can it do for anything? So for example, even for commands with Control R, with history. Wow, okay, it's brilliant. Yeah, I'm actually using AutoJump for uh, for finding files, but but it, yeah, it's fuzzy and it works quite well, but it's only for files. So yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Thank you. Okay, interesting. So lots of interesting tools. Uh, okay, so let's go for next one. Okay, and I believe this is the last one. So how are we with time? Okay, we are actually burning through it quite quick, uh, quicker than I than I thought. So, uh, so if this session didn't exist, where are you getting your news or, or, uh, like to learn something? Uh, okay, Reddit's winning. So how are you guys feeling about what's doing uh, happening in Reddit recently? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So hopefully we can access the information still in the web archives. But but you are right that it's amazing that when you like look, searching for something, you get some Reddit thread, and, and you can find context and even people having similar problems. So it's really helpful. And now with the API changes, we might lose it. Okay, so Reddit, Twitter, Mastodon, nice hacker news. Okay, perfect. Oh, even DevConf, <laughs> amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and root CZ, so we have some uh, Czech and Slovak people here in the audience. So anyone still using like uh, like the old school RSS feeds or something like that? Okay, also that, perfect. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, and as I said, uh, actually th this is the last slide. I thought that we would spend more time here, so maybe I should have prepared better, but I have prepared more questions, but I didn't put them in this, uh, in the, in this site. So since we still have like 15 minutes, maybe we can go through that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Th this question I, I had prepared, but I tried to sort of like filter out those that I didn't think would be that interesting. And, uh, yeah, text editors and IDs, so maybe I should have included that I in the list. And I saw already some Vims and PyCharms. Uh, so any new feature in any text editor or ID that you really like, it's worth sharing. Can you join the VS Code, the chat uh, with the configuration uh, on okay. the site? Mm -hmm. But it's a nice feature. Mm -hmm. If wow. someone doesn't know, you can apply it on GitHub or mm -hmm. like on the GitHub provider page mm -hmm. uh, for the insider. It's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so, so the comment was that VS Code has a ability to, that it's integrated with ChatGPT directly and you need to uh, like apply for beta to get in the program and, and, and the comment was that it works pretty well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's that saves you a few alt tabs to going to the uh, website. Uh, 
Okay, and I, I think, yeah, I, we pretty much went through it. Uh, so we have like 10 minutes left. Okay, so any questions or, or comments? Like, uh, anything you want to share anything? Uh, like my plan is uh, like to save the data from that. I'll try to go through it and maybe apply, like listen to the recording and, and exploit some of them. And I will share all of this in a blog post. So if you missed one tool or something, it should be available. Yeah, I will be on vacation one week, but when I get back from the vacation, so in two weeks, I'll try to put it in the DevConf blog and, and share it. So if you missed something, it should be up there. And thank you everyone for uh, finding this and participating. I, I think it was lovely and I, I'm really planning to go through the tools and, and all things you put inside because I, I really love when we can get inspired and, and share these fascinating tools and features. So thank you so much for joining.